Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Real Life Health Show. I'm really excited about my next guest. I've been following for a long time. His name is Tori, and he's a vegan bodybuilder. Tori, welcome to the show. Thank you very much for having me on the show, Paul. I appreciate your time and effort and giving me this chance to share my story and my journey. I appreciate you. Thank you. And Tori, I grew up in New York, in Brooklyn, and I was BK? always... Yeah, BK. BK. It's been a long time since I've been there, but I was always going to the gym. I was a, what we would call a gym rat in New York when I was growing up. And then I became a vegetarian and people were concerned, oh, you're going to lose muscle, whatever. But I, I was happy with my results and I am happy with my results. But you're taking it to the next level. You're showing people that you can be strong and be a vegan. So I want to talk about that today. But can you get into your background? Just introduce yourself quickly to the people and then we'll get into your story. Nice. Thank you very much. I got to ask you real quick. You went vegetarian. How, how long ago was that? When was that? What year was that? About 30 years ago. Wow. Yeah, I've been on a raw vegan diet now for 30 years. Wow. That's that's amazing, Paul. That's amazing. So, and Paul is one of my good friends. So that's a name I can't forget. So <laughs> I uh, I got started. I was raised vegetarian. And the reason that's why I asked you that question, because I was raised vegetarian based on my mother's religious beliefs. She was a... Uh, Seven-day Adventist. She was brought up Catholic, but eventually switched over to Seven-day Adventist. And I noticed that you had a book that was called um, Health Based on the Bible. And so one of our our reason for being vegetarian was the Seven-day Adventist way of life. They go by everything based on the Bible. And so that's why we started out that way. And so I say about... After, you know, being raised vegetarian for my first nine years, I went into, we moved to Jamaica. My mom sent us to Jamaica based on the fact that financially she was having, you know, problems because she was a single mother, two sons, and her parents were, they, they requested her, hey, send your kids here, you know, while you get yourself back together financially. And so we went to Jamaica. We lived in Jamaica. Now, during that time, I was not vegetarian nor vegan. And that was because my grandparents had no clue what that lifestyle entailed. The only thing that my mother requested to them was that we we not eat pork. Because in Jamaica, you know, they eat everything. And, you know, but it's jerk pork or whatever. So we never had pork. And so coming back to the States after being there, going to school, I eventually transitioned back into being a not from vegetarian, I went to more to vegan. And the reason that happened was a lot of my friends, we were Jamaican and we started to grow our hair in locks and we wanted to learn more about the lifestyle. And so being vegetarian, I eventually switched fully versus my friends and be, became vegan. At the time, I had no, no recollection of that term or phrase. I didn't know that it even existed. It's not until someone actually said it to me. So that happened in 98. 98. So how old are you now? Yeah. So this is something I never used to really talk about because, well, you know, we don't I have to. That. You don't have no, to. No, no, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. I, I didn't used to talk about it only because I was always passed off as being 20 years younger just by people looking at me. And so it was nice. And so I am, I just turned 50 in August 10th. Okay, so you and I have a lot in common. So first, my book, Health According to the Scriptures, is based on Ellen White's health reform. Uh, her teachings are the <laughs> best teachings on health that anyone can ever find. And my not only my book, but my personal life and diet is based on her health reform, but I just do it from a raw vegan version. Uh, but it's wonderful. And it's really sad what's happened to the Seventh-day Adventist Church today because they went from eating a healthy diet that she promoted to eating vegan junk food and they're even eating meat now and everything so yes but, you know it's, oh, it's yes i don't understand i mean i look i'm like what are you guys doing it's like they make up now reasons of why they can eat meat now they were the only christian organization that promoted health and did yes. it in a healthy way and now yes. they they're, it's not good it's not good and uh i got it off so and not only that i mean on another note i mean there's something Ellen White taught was called dress reform, which was modesty. That's not happening in the church today. And Seventh-day Adventist okay. church is not, it's, it's, it's just like every other church. And it's not, 
not her teachings, the Ellen White's teachings. But so we got that in common. I've been to Jamaica a good amount of times. Uh, I love jackfruit and ackee. I have trees and uh, ackee. Yeah. What? I, eat I, it. I eat the ackee raw. Uh, yeah. And you know, it's crazy that you say that because in Jamaica and even now, it's like it can be poison if it's not cooked. And I was like, I don't know if that's really true, but whatever. Well, well, well what it is is, uh, e even if you cook it, is if you if you pick it off the tree before it opens up, then it's poison. So uh, as long as it opens up and you eat it, it's fine. So uh, yeah, so I've been to Kingston, I've been to uh, I've been to St. Catherine, I've been to all over Jamaica, and uh, so it's really cool. And I had some really good friends that uh, were reggae stars as well. So, uh, so yeah, it's all good. So, so you're 50 years old now. So when, how old were you when your mom sent you and your brother to Jamaica? Nine. I was nine. nine. Okay. Yeah. So for your first nine years of your life, you're a vegetarian. And then you go to Jamaica, you come back. How old were you when you came back? I was there for about almost three years, but I had already eight. So I was like about 12 years old. So you and come back. Yeah. Yeah. So I came back to middle school here in South Florida because before I moved to Jamaica, I lived in Alabama. And in Alabama, my environment was typically people of my skin tone. So I had no interaction with other races. And so that's why I had never really heard of the term vegan because in our environment, and I was never, that was never a, a term. It was more just vegetarian because of that came from Seventh-day Adventists. So once I left Jamaica, and moved back to the States, but I moved to South Florida. I went to middle school here. And first we started out in a Christian school, a Seventh-day Adventist Christian school. And we then transitioned from there to public school. And then in public school, I started to really get more into the Jamaican heritage because of the friends that I started to interact with were Jamaican. And so we started to hang out more and speak more Patois because once I moved back from Jamaica to here, a lot of people in South Florida, which I've realized now a lot of my high school and middle school classmates were of the Jewish faith, but they were, it was a different era because I was actually kind of picked on for being Jamaican and having an accent. And so we kind of hid it for a while, but then eventually we just kind of embraced it and just took on the Rastafari lifestyle and started to learn more about it and that's when i kind of transitioned more into the quote-unquote vegan lifestyle now they call that ital food right Correct. Ital. Yes, yes okay so so here you are doing it to uh, get back to your roots you're eating uh the the vegan foods and how was your transition and 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 when did you start getting into a bodybuilding so you know it's it's I always find this question very interesting because I get this question a lot because I think a lot of times people complicate going from one type of food to a different type of food. And it, to me, it was nothing complicated. It was more so, I just, it was like a light switch. I just switched it off and that was it. I, I remember my last meal that contained any type of flesh was salmon with uh, one of my girls that I was dating at the time. So I had salmon and rice. And that was it. The next day, I was eating nothing but vegan, vegetarian-style foods. And that was, like I said, 98. And so bodybuilding, I had always been into body. I got into bodybuilding, like, right after moving from Jamaica. Because in Jamaica, I was picked on as well. We were picked on because we came to Jamaica with this accent from Alabama. You know, I don't know what I sounded like because I don't do that now. <laughs> so... But we were picked on. I was a lot more fair skin. And so it was called Red Mongoose. And, you know, plus we were kind of a little bit more wealthier than the kids there because my grandfather was an electrician. And of course, we came from the States. So it made it seem like automatically we were just, we had money. And so when I moved back from Jamaica, I started getting into weightlifting because I really wanted to be a superhero because I wanted to not have people pick on me. And I figured that was my outlet. So if I could be a superhero, maybe that's what I'll do. So I started, we watched a lot of cartoons. I got into the Wolverine and the Superman. Those are two of my, my, two of my favorite characters. And then from that point on, my mom, I asked my mom for a bench. And she bought me a bench and a dumbbell. 
and I started working out in our back porch with just that one dumbbell and uh, bench press. And then I started watching the cartoons, like I said, and then I got into Arnold Schwarzenegger and I saw some of his movies and just his physique made me look at him and think, okay, he's that has that superhero physique. How did he do it? And once I started to learn that he did bodybuilding, that's when, that's what inspired me to get into it even more. And I remember taking weightlifting in high school. And then I would got a, finally, eventually got a membership at Gold's Gym in Fort Lauderdale, well, Sunrise, Fort Lauderdale, Sunrise, Florida. And I started seeing all the bodybuilders back in the day. They were, they would come to that gym a lot. And so I would see them and it was inspiring. Started so reading all the magazines watching any movie that Arnold Schwarzenegger was in. And I just started lifting and reading on how to lift properly. And that's sparked my interest from there, there on to continue to start lifting. And I was like, I said, I was about 90, 1989, 90, because I was 15 when I started working out. Okay. So you look like there have been, so you've been a vegetarian for 35 years or so. Uh, consistently, I mean, from, from 89. So this is amazing. I have so many questions right now. So first, uh, so I, what are you, are you, when you say vegetarian, are you just using that phrase or like, do you just do not, do you do milk and dairy? Like, are you, why are you vegan? What are you doing that makes you vegetarian? No, I was, no, I'm not, I'm vegan. Are you vegan? I was saying okay. I was raised vegetarian, vegetarian and now okay. I was vegetarian. But I, yeah, yeah, yeah. So okay. I went, like I said, I went vegan in 98 and I cut everything out. And I remember, you know, back then, before I made that full switch, I wasn't reading the labels to see what was in stuff. Sure. You know, if it was not meat, I would eat it, but it may have had milk in it or eggs at the time. And then once I fully went vegan, I started to really pay attention to the ingredients of what I was eating. And so... Mainly, I ate, I ate tofu like it was going out of stock. You know, tofu, rice and peas, you know, any type of Jamaican chocho, dumpling, yam, you know, kalalu, all of those things, pumpkin soup, all those things I was eating. But once I went into the bodybuilding era, I remember my um, my first time, because I, I wanted to compete while I was in high school, but it never it never happened. You know, I actually ended up, injuring my knee playing, attempting to play American football because in Jamaica we play football, but it's soccer. And so I was playing that and running track. And I remember the coaches saw my speed and my size and asked me if I could come out for football. And so I attempted to do it and I injured my knee in scrimmage. I didn't even make it to a game. And so once I injured my knee, that kind of messed up my competing and it kind of messed up my track because I was really fast on track. And it, it happened around my junior year. And I think about my senior year, I went back into track, did very well. And then I got into college. And I went to college in Alabama, university called Tuskegee University. There is where I really just worked out. I didn't work out to compete. I just kind of kept kept that going. I was still into bodybuilding, but not as deep as I was into it when I was in high school. Cause once you get to college, you know, you have more to focus on. I had to focus on, okay, gotta pick a pick a major and focus on the degree. And so I ended up doing mechanical engineering. Okay. So how tall are you and how much do you weigh? Right now, I right now, I weigh five seven. I'm height, I'm five seven and I weigh currently about one sixty four. Okay. And give us an example of your diet on your daily day. I mean, is it like, do you put, is your job of bodybuilding, is that what you do or is that just your hobby? Well, it, it's, it's more like a, it's a hobby. Okay. I do, because what I do currently, I'm, I speak, currently in the process of writing a book, and I coach and train in person and online people that are competitors, regular overall fitness, and people that just want to stay in shape. You know, so so right now I'm in a gym, and at this gym I train individuals here in Miami. 
And so bodybuilding actually is just something I love to do, you know, because I love the competitive nature, but I also like to continuous improve. Basically, I love to get on stage to show what I have accomplished for myself because I'm not, Paul, I'm not taking the drugs that would make you even more successful when it comes to bodybuilding. So you clearly have to enjoy it in order to go on stage because your your chances of actually winning or doing extremely well are a lot lessened for the simple fact that you're not taking any of the the drugs that they have on this on the market. Have you ever been tempted to take them? Not not necessarily to the point where they're in my vicinity, but more so like, hmm, wonder what it, how I would look if I did. Because often, Paul, I get the accusation that I am already taking because there's no way that I can look the way I do and eat no no animal flesh. So I have to use. And so to me, it's it's almost, it's more of a compliment when people accuse me of it. And so then I'm thinking to myself, man, if I was on it, do you realize where I would be now in this community if I was actually taking it? Because with based on my genetic genetics and my work ethic, I would be a monster. Sure. So uh, give us an example, because I know the vegan diet is the healthiest diet out there. And I myself exercise and I have a lot of vegan friends that exercise but none of us look anywhere near like you. Uh, so uh, before we get into your workout routine, give us an example of your diet. And after we do that, I'm going to ask you, you know, things like your supplementation, your sleep, but, but let's start with diet and then we'll get into uh, later your workout. And then we'll get into your book because I really want to hear about that. And everybody, I'm going to put Tori's website below with all his contact information on Instagram, Facebook, all those great places you can contact him. But let's start with diet. Uh, has your diet been so, consistent over the years or or, or, or do, have you have you changed up things? So when I first started bodybuilding, which is in 2009, and that happened because a friend of mine was in competing and I didn't realize he was competing. He was competing in a neighboring city. I was living in Alabama. He was competing in Atlanta, Georgia. And so I decided to go watch his competition. And once I saw his show, and saw him on stage and off stage, his physique really showcased to me, I need to change something because I thought I looked good, you know, but to the average person, I did look good. This of course was a competition style body, which looked like and emulated the actual action figures and the superheroes I saw on TV. So I wanted to look that that. So I asked him, I said, hey, I wanna compete. His first response was, but you're vegan. And I said, that's not a problem because to them it was because they didn't think I could do that. And I said, no, nah, it should be no problem. Now, at the time I was eating like lots of bread because, you know, I was in just working in corporate America, bread. I was eating a lot of like your vegan cold cuts, like the tofurkey and, you know, peanut butter and nuts, seeds, fruit, lots of fruit, lots of Veggies would be mostly like broccoli and, you know, simple things, spinach, collard greens, things like that. Because I was, you know, like I said, I was living in Alabama. And so then eventually, once we started bodybuilding, I, I adjusted it to where I was eating mostly tofu because I wanted to increase my protein intake. But I didn't do it based on the fact that I needed to increase my protein intake. It was me. So I was eating more intuitively. So I would just eat mostly tofu sweet potato, Japanese sweet potatoes specifically, because once I found out about Japanese sweet potatoes, because I have a sweet tooth, and I, once I indulged in them, I knew from then on, Japanese sweet potatoes were going to be my sweet potatoes of choice. So there, and then I did a lot of mixed greens and broccoli. So mind you, because of the time, I had no true knowledge of nutrition, just based on what I read and what have you. And he told me, because he was helping me out for my first show, he told me basically, stop eating the bread, stop eating the cold cuts, and just eat mostly foods that are, you know, not in a, not with a lot of sodium, you know, but that was the, that was the, the reasoning behind it is 
you don't want to eat too much sodium. You don't want to chew gum. You don't do these things. And so, mind you, you know, although I've learned that you don't have to do it that way now, but that's what I did in the beginning. And so now, currently, my typical day is oatmeal. Uh, I may have oatmeal in the morning or some whole grain cereal, or I'll have a regular meal. And the meal might be Japanese sweet potatoes, fava bean tofu. With this any is your breakfast green, you're uh, talking about, so, right? Yeah, I can, it could be my breakfast. Okay. You know, or, or sometimes my breakfast is uh, rice cakes with peanut butter, some fruit, and a protein shake. You know, it just it, it just changes. Now, protein shakes only came in for like later on in my life because I, when I was competing from 2009 till about 2015, I didn't take any supplementation. It was basically just me eating food. And when I say intuitively, I would eat more when the time I wasn't competing and I would just eat less as I got closer to a show because my body responded very quickly to the less, the smaller portions. And so once I in- decreased my portions, Increase my hit cardio, meaning I would do sprints and I would get lean super fast. I could do one or two sessions of sprints a week and I would shred five pounds within a week and a half. And so I, would, I could always get lean and shredded for a competition. For me, was the problem was maintaining a, a size and fullness, you know, but in the natural bodybuilding world, it was more so about your condition and fullness, but it was harder for people to get conditioned. And that for me, it was easy. And so that part always kept me in the top five, top three, when it came to competition, you know, where I, you know, I was fighting for first place sometimes, but guys would just be a little bigger because they knew how to fill out and look more, look bigger as I do now. But so, so moving on to now, like, for example, yesterday morning, I had oatmeal with blueberries a little drizzled chocolate, dark chocolate, and protein powder mixed in it. And so my second meal was more of tofu with rice, black rice this time, and some asparagus. And then my later meal would be seitan. So I do eat seitan, seitan with either Japanese sweet potatoes or regular sweet potatoes or regular potatoes with a little quinoa and veggies of course and you know as i get closer to the show i don't do as fruit as much but i i stick i still eat fruit throughout my entire prep and when i'm not prepping for a competition because to me you know the fiber and the nutrients that you get from it by far are always necessary n- needed but when i'm looking to lower my carbohydrates that's where fruit actually is not within my meal plan for that day because my 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 weeks change when it comes to what i'm gonna eat because i track macros so macros being the protein carbs and fat and i track those all the way up to my competition okay so when you're eating like give us how big are your portions because again you and i are the same size and i'm big into uh how amounts to eat and i when i counsel people that are sick or people that are healthy and people that are fit I always like to get not just what they're eating, but how much are you eating? So to maintain your 165-pound body or going up and down, depending on your competition, how much do you eat in your portion? Do you have oatmeal for breakfast? Are we talking a bowl or are we talking like six bowls? What are we talking about? <laughs> a bowl. <laughs> a bowl, okay. So, so for example, I gave you like a calorie breakdown for the day. So I'm doing about 190 grams of protein. That's, that's roughly 760 calories. And then you got... 40 grams of fat, which is roughly 360 calories. So right there, we already have 1,120 calories. And then you have carbohydrates are at 120. So that's 480 calories. So looking at about 1,600 calories right now. And normally before I'm getting closer to my, because right now we're starting something a little different where we're looking to get lean early on prior to the show is 13 weeks from now. So we're looking to be lean as we need to be by about the eighth week. And so then in the eighth week, we'll probably bring it back up a little bit to kind of keep the fullness, but maintain our leanness. So on a regular, normal 
not competing, competing, I'm I'm in the range of between thirty five hundred to five thousand calories a day. Well, how do you get that from sixteen hundred? Oh, that's no. the show when you're trying to get lean. And that's when I'm yeah, the sixteen hundred is when I'm getting ready for competition. Okay. Thirty five to five hundred. Thirty five hundred to five thousand is when I'm not doing competition. Okay. So when you're not doing competition, what happens? Do you because I see you online, you look amazing, but when you're not doing competition, do you just blow up and put a shirt on? Like how no, no, no. <laughs> is that a big <laughs> no, difference in calories? That's like a big difference. That's like I I look it's funny because to me, I don't like it. But when people see me, they're like, you always look lean. And and I find that so funny. But that's, that's just from the average individual based on the average person walking around. Me on stage versus me walking around, in my eyes, looks different. Of course, some people, once they get used to it, they'll see. I'm like, oh, okay, I can tell. But it, I, at the most, Paul, I go up to about 10 pounds over my stage weight. And that's I guess that's not that noticeable because, you know, I carry the weight pretty much evenly distributed. So it doesn't look like I have a big belly or anything like that. It's, you know, and that's just not something that I do anyway. My body's not really into getting 20 to 30 pounds overweight. So is 165 your, your competing weight or your, your weight when you're not competing? So when I compete, I get down to 157 shredded. But then I eat in order to fill out for the show. So I'm pretty much on stage between 162 and 164. You know, so right now I'm on the I'm on the I'm going down to 157. Once I get to 157, then we can cruise up to the show. So that therefore we still keep that leanness. So that way only thing that's taking in the nutrients are the muscles. So we're not putting on any subcutaneous water to which covers the the look that you want on stage. Sure. And after the competition, uh, you said you put on 10 pounds. So, so what do you go to 170, 175? Yeah, probably about 170, 170, 172. Okay. If you don't mind me asking, what's your waist size uh, during competition and, and again, out of competition? So during competition, about 25, 26. And out of it is about 28. Okay. Okay. So uh, amazing. And I do want to tell the viewers here, uh, you know, and people our age, because you and I are the same age, actually, or similar. I'm a couple years older. But uh, some people have better genetics in general when they're just in general. So even if they eat bad, they look decent. Uh, and when they put the work into it, they look amazing. So don't feel bad if you're exercising hard and you're not looking like uh, Tori here. But uh, keep at it, everybody, because... Uh, you know, it's exercise is so important. And that's what I want to talk about. Give us an example of your workout routine now. And also like when you first picked up the weights, like was that good enough for the average person? Or did you, do you like, did you really fine tune it because of the competitions or because like for what reasons? Like give us an example of what you do now working out wise, how much time you spend and, and uh, how you break it down and what you used to do. So currently I have someone that I go to to train with once, about once a week, once or twice a week. And the reason I started doing that is that I just wanted to take it to the next level because prior to 2016, I didn't have anybody training me, no coach, no nothing of that nature. It was, it was really me doing it myself because I think my ego took over because I started to do well and I was doing it on my own. And I remember I was married at the time. My wife suggested, why don't you get a coach? See how that'll help you. And I said, okay. So I looked into a gentleman that I kept seeing all the time working with guys who were doing very well. And I, once we got in together, his name is Cliff Wilson. You know, he's not vegan, but he understands nutrition and just competition. So once we got together, the irony of it all is he said when he saw me a long time ago in a, comp in a competition, he had a guy competing and I beat his guy, like blew him away. But the thing is, he heard me, overheard me in the back talking about, I don't carb up. And he was like, man, if he carved up, he would look phenomenal. And so I remember that because I was doing that well, just because I was just so lean and genetically gifted that I could get up on stage without taking all the carbs and still beat guys that were taking in the carb, doing everything right, but I just had a superior structure. And so 
And that's why it goes into what you were just saying to everybody on there, because a lot of times people ask me, how do I get a waist like you? And I have to let them know my waist is genetic. You know, even though I do train and do certain things, you train, you can train just like me and it's not going to, it's not going to, hold on, sorry about that. Yeah. We lost your picture just now. There you go. Sorry about that. Now your picture's not on. Okay, there, there you go. Perfect, perfect. Sorry perfect. about that. Yeah, so. It's all right. So I have to, you know, reaffirm to them that, look, you can train everything and just like me, eat just like me. You're not going to look like me because you're going to look like the better version of yourself. One thing I can do is assist you in getting to that physical prowess that you want to get to and that what fits your genetic makeup. And so now I started training with a gentleman named Paul, Paul Baker. He's also not vegan, but he's also about, I guess, actually only three years older than me. And so, but he's been a pro for a longer time and he's been in the scene, but he's also knows the ins and out of training. He trains hard. The first time I trained with him was 2013. And I remember Paul that, Paul and Paul. I remember Paul, I couldn't walk after doing legs with him. And that's when I knew, man, this is how pros train. And I was always afraid to train so hard and heavy because I was very keen on not getting injured. Because, and I had gone all my life for no injury training. And people found that interesting because they were just like, you've never been injured? I like, no. But I never really pushed myself so hard. And so once I did that with him that day, so fast forward, seven years later, no, not even, 2013 to about 2022, I decided he, he and him and I got into, got together finally, and we started working out. I work out with him once a week and man, you know, it's crazy because he trains with the intensity and the, the workout sessions usually are about almost two hours, you know? So it's me and another one of my colleagues that I knew from back in the day, but on my own, I work out probably about an hour, maybe an hour 15, you know, my typical split is I'm you and doing back with shoulders or chest with arms, legs always by themselves. You know, I, I may even once in a while throw shoulders with legs, but being a natural bodybuilder and not using any, you know, substances to promote muscle growth, you have to almost stimulate them a little bit more, you know, more often, especially if you want growth out of them. And so for me, one of my weak areas that I thought of was my back and my shoulders. I always wanted to keep my shoulders wide and my back detailed because I have a wide back for my structure, but it's the detail that I needed to create more into my back. So I thought I'd, when I train with Paul, we work on back the most and, and we do legs here and there because legs also are very important for just overall wellness, as well as helping keep testosterone levels at a good rate and you know increasing the igf and with also the division i'm in men's physique at the beginning it really wasn't about legs but they're starting now to incorporate legs a little bit into the overall look of the competitor so we've increased leg training days to more than just once a week so now i'm doing back to like two maybe two and a half and i say two and a half because that third day, it's not necessarily all legs. It may be a little bit here just to kind of keep more blood flow in there. And so my training is split. Usually I'm doing two to three body parts per day. And I'm I'm working out about five to six days a week. And okay. cardio is about right now, 35 minutes a day. 35 minutes every day cardio. Not every day, four days a week. Sorry, four, four days, days a week. But, okay. And when you do the legs, do you split it? And like sometimes do you work just the hamstrings and sometimes you work the thighs or do you always do both together? So I may typically do them always both together because it's also based on the amount of time I have in a day. And I work with clients and usually I'm with clients from anywhere from six in the morning till about 1 p.m. That's why I was with our time. I was thinking, OK, would it be sure. doable? But it's and then usually I'm training in the afternoon between usually I'm training right now, 12 to two o'clock. 
right? And then I have clients in the evening, you know, at a different location. So I have two locations that I go to and I'm working with clients. And then I have online clients as well. So when I do legs, typically I'm doing hamstrings and quads. But there are days where I'm doing just quads and I'll make sure I'm doing calves as well. And there are days where I'm adding glutes into it. But then there are days where I'm doing quads and hamstrings. I rarely do hamstrings alone, but I still, I do it sometimes. And when I'm doing hamstrings alone, that's because I'm probably doing heavy RDLs, leg curls, seated leg curls, uh, Nordic curls. And then I'm doing glutes where I'm doing hip thrust, abduction, and lunges, things like that. But but calves, I try to, my goal is to hit calves at least once or twice a week. Sure. Now, myself, I always loved the gym. I used to box and I, I loved the gym. I know it looked nowhere near like you, but I love lifting weights and I always have. And everyone, I said, do what you love, just move. I tell people, do what you love. Don't do what you don't love. But I see a lot of people doing calisthenics and looking great. Do you think if somebody has a trainer or figures out the, the, the formula, they can get just as strong and, and with calisthenics as they could with going to the gym and lifting weights? Yes, strength, definitely. The the look that of a competitor is going to be different than a calisthenics, personal calisthenics. But the strength, yes, because, you know, strength, there are people who are smaller than, let's just say, let's say smaller than me, for example, that can probably lift more, bench more, squat more, and deadlift more, you know, because their strength, I think strength is not parallel with muscle size, which is interesting. But because there, like I said, there are people who are just just strong and they don't have the same look that a person who looks like a, a world renowned bodybuilder. You know what I mean? Because that, you know, they're working, they're working their body in a different way. But yes, I feel like calisthenics, they can be strong. You can get strong. When, you, when you're doing calisthenics, I mean the most you're ever lifting lift really is your own body weight. Your own body weight, right. But when you look lifting weights, you can go much, much higher. So I, of course, more of a chance of injury, but still, like, so how could somebody be uh, have more strength, like, sticking to their own body weight size? Which is so. For example, there can be a calisthenic guy. Let's say we weigh the same, and we go to do pull ups. He could probably do more than I can. Well, that's like that's but pull ups are a calisthenic that they probably do every day when they're working out. Yeah, like exactly. That. And so when you know, the bodybuilder, we're putting on a lot of muscle mass with other things. And then we go to do pull-ups. We're not able to do as many pull-ups. Got it. You know? I got you. Okay. And, that makes sense. That makes sense. Okay. So from your diet standpoint, man, 190 grams of protein. I mean, from a health standpoint, if somebody's eating meat and, and they tell me to eat 190 grams of protein, whether a bodybuilder or not. As a health teacher, I'm going to tell them that's just not healthy. It's too much protein. Uh, from a vegetarian standpoint, you figured out how to get 190 grams, and it's different than meat. It's definitely not as bad as eating 190 grams of protein from meat. But, I mean, do you think, like, I know it's for physical looks, but do you think that is really, for overall health, uh, a, a good diet? So, and now, one thing, too, I guess, you know, using that term because diet, I never really use that word because for me, when I say, when I hear diet, I think of, you. Can, we're not ready to die yet, D-I-E, yet. Or people can get on a diet and get off. You know, it's a lifestyle. So for me, when it comes to competing, my, my protein intake goes up because we're looking to min minimize muscle loss because of the, the actual deficit that we go into. So we increase the protein intake just so that we can maximize muscle retention since the the deficit. So, you know, I told you 1600 calories. I'm, I usually, I go down even further than that. And that can also cause the body to use the muscle for a form of energy. And so in order to kind of limit that process to be increased protein. Now on a regular basis, even before I had a coach call, I actually looked into it just to see. And I was, like I said, I was doing well, really competing I was probably getting 50 to 100 at the most grams of protein. And that's because of I was not taking shakes or anything like that. I was just eating food. And 
once I did change that and started doing the deficit, I did notice the difference because when I would get on stage, even though I was shredded, like I said, I wasn't as full because I lost some of the muscle size. So now I'm able to maximize the muscle retention while still being shredded with the increase in protein. And now as we get closer to my competition, the protein does go down and then the carbs and the fat start going back up, you know, and in order to fill out more because the protein is not necessarily needed because we're not deficit anymore and we're not training as hard. You know, we're training lighter and less in order to just keep blood flow going but to maximize our look. So yeah, on a regular basis, I wouldn't suggest people doing it that high. Sure. And f- besides the protein powder, what other supplements do you take? Creatine. So those two things, creatine yes. and protein powder. Yes. And as a vegetarian, do you take B12? I mean, I don't make it a, a end all. You know, if, it, if I get it, I get it. You know, sometimes I'll take it, sometimes I won't. You know, it's... It's one of those things where when this lifestyle was getting big, it was always something, you know, something that was to deter people from doing it. Oh, you're not going to get enough protein. You know, it's not bioavailable. Yep, that's not it. Then it was, oh, B12. You're not going to get B12 as a vegan vegetarian. You guys will get sickly, blah, blah, blah. And then it's like just on and on. It's always something new added to the requirements to be uh, vegan. So therefore, now it's not a lifestyle. It's more like you're doing this extreme diet. So now you need to take all these supplements. Why are you doing that? You know. And so that's how I looked at it. But of course, I have friends that are doctors and that are vegan doctors, and they would say, you know, you should get it. Make sure you get it. Da, da, da. But I mean, I know that it also is impacted by the absorption in the body. You know, if your your gut is not absorbing the nutrients properly, you're not going to get it anyway. And so it's not just a vegan vegetarian thing. You know, it's people who consume meat daily don't are B12 deficient as well. And, you know, now is that to say that it's based on the fact that they're vegan, they're vegan vegetarian? No, because they're clearly not. You know, what else is causing them not able sure. to get that n- nutrient in their body? Sure. Do you so, have yeah, to- like I said, something. Yeah. Do you ever get your blood tested? You know, I've been actually thinking of doing that. I have never done it. Okay. And I said to myself, actually, that's funny because last week I said I need to, I want to for more than just that, but also to see where my testosterone is, you know, because I, I have no clue, but I, I don't feel like I'm lacking. Sure. Sure. I feel that. And how do you feel your overall health is for a for a fifty year old man? I mean, have do you ever go to the doctor? Do you ever get sick? Do you ever go to the that and that doesn't necessarily determine our, our overall Correct. health, but, Correct. but Correct. how how would you rate yourself? I mean, you like me, our friends are getting this age and we see what's going on with them. So how would you rate your health overall? Man, I, I still feel like I'm like twenty eight. You know, and I don't I don't even use that word S I C K. You know, I just spell it out because it doesn't happen to me. You know, people find that it odd you know that you know it doesn't happen but it doesn't you know i just i enjoy being outside i enjoy getting my son i hydrate as much as possible i rest as much as i can because i think people are missing out on the fact that seven to eight hours or seven to nine hours at the minimum seven is so integral for for recovery fat loss especially when it comes to bodybuilding, you know, and I do my best to tell people that because I think a lot of times we negate that based on the fact that we just want to keep grinding, got to keep grinding, got to do this, got to do that. You know, we're never taking time for ourselves. So I rate myself like, I am I feel like 28, 30. There you go. And how much sleep do you get? Seven or eight hours a night, you say? Yeah, that's my, that's my target. And usually as I get closer to my competition, I'm getting more. Yeah. And I noticed that once I do that, man, I drop fat very fast. Yeah, I think it's the most important indicator of where we're at and and is our sleep. Everything we do should try to figure out a way to get good quality sleep because that's where the yes. body heals itself. And, yes. uh, and, you know, it's amazing, you know, when you get good sleep, how you feel the next day versus when you don't. Oh, my God. You, oh know? My God. you know, so tell me, I, I'm 
uh, in my 50s, I've never had a cup of coffee in my life. Somebody like yourself who's who's working hard, do you do energy drinks or coffee at all or anything like no, that? No, so coffee only came in because um when we go to stage, they it's 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 a sort of a thing to help the veins, to help rush the nutrients into your system. So I would do coffee, like a little bit of coffee and salt. And we mix that together. And then I go work, I go pump up. And that is just it's just amazing what it does. But no, I've never been a, a coffee drinker to like no, that was that was just not something I needed. And you don't need the asking, caffeine to get through the day, in other words. No, no, no. And yeah. then the pre workout thing is it's interesting because you know, I remember people like, you don't take pre workout. Okay, what's your pre workout? I was like, it's all mental for me. I know I'm going to the gym and I know what I want to do. And I'm ready to go. I don't need the pre-workout. But I'm noticing, man, especially now, a lot of the younger generation, they drink it like it's water. Like all the time to the point where they have to drink it. And I'm thinking, you're 18. Why do you yeah. even need them? Yeah, those energy drinks are dangerous. And, you know, man. these little kids are taking it. It's crazy. But, but man, so if somebody wants your service, first tell us about your book. What's your book going to be about? Is it your story? Is it how to buy yeah, it? So, What's your book about? So, Paul, you know, I've been asked this so many times, like over the years, past 10 years, people have said, you need a book, you need a book, you need a book. And in my mind, when I think book, I'm thinking, that's a lot of work. I don't know if I have that time. But then someone, had, I remember someone mentioned to me, you can get a writer and they'll write it for you. You just give them all the information. And I was like, I thought about that then, but I just didn't know. So now I started doing that. I My book is a sort of a memoir style with workouts and recipes, you know, because a lot of people always want to know my story, you know, and I feel like everybody has a story. We should all tell our story. And so I decided to do that and I put it together, my book proposal. And it's actually really nice. You know, I've been rejected a few uh, numerous times because I felt like I don't have a story that's a seller because I'm not the rock or something like that, you know, but I figured, you know what, bump it. I'm going to keep going, you know, and maybe now I just have to self-publish and figure out that way and just do it like that. So if there's a publisher watching right now, wants an amazing story of a vegan bodybuilder, contact Tori, because that book's going to be a bestseller. It will. <laughs> you know, Definitely absolutely. Will. Absolutely. So if somebody wants your services, is it just bodybuilding or do you teach them how to eat? If somebody has cancer, like, do you send them to somebody else? Like, what do you do yeah, with see, services? I, I have no problem delegating or sending people off to those who are more versed in something when it comes to like cancer or diabetes, diabetes or that thing, because, you know, there's, there's an abundance out there. There's enough for everybody. We can all do well if we truly believe in ourselves, you know, so I don't know it all, you know, but when it comes to fitness, getting in shape and learning how to eat based on your macros or what composition works for you, I can help you with that. You know, but if, it, if you're looking to heal yourself of cancer, I'm maybe sending you to Paul or you know, someone else yeah. that knows what they're doing when it comes to it. Because I know a lot of people like I'll give you a, a story. My one of my clients, his wife was diagnosed with brain cancer. I think it's brain cancer. And that was about a little over 10 years ago. And I remember they told me that she went in, they gave her like six months. She went raw vegan and lived for another eight years. And, they, and, it, and it changed the whole family. They became vegan. And that's how I met them. You know, wow. so, you know, so I know that there's benefits there. And I think a lot of times people just, because I, I did it for a while, you know, and I've, and I've been asked about it a lot. And I think it's, Honestly, I feel like it's the best way to go, you know? So I think once I get out of this thing and start, or I stop com competing, I may end up there with you, Paul. Well, I was going to ask you, if you, somebody like you, went raw vegan, even through the competition, like somebody who was not a vegan would say it's impossible to do it a vegan, would you tell somebody it's impossible to do this raw vegan? Nah, because I think there's nothing that's impossible. You know, because there's always someone I can break that, 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 that so-called limit and show that it can be done. Sure. I mean, they said, they said about the four minute mile and look at it now. Yeah. Yeah.
You know, there's a, there's a good amount of raw vegan athletes out there that really yes. are, are competing on a high level. I actually saw, I think there was one guy I remember reading a while ago. He was so lean. He's like, I'm just going to enter a bodybuilding show. Like he did a natural competition and he did well. I think he won. I don't remember who it was, but. What do you think of that vegan a movie that came out a couple of years ago? It did really well uh, with the competition. They had the world's strongest man in there. I can't get what was the name of that? Uh, from, come up from the ground up. No, no, no. It was called. Have you seen that one? No, I haven't seen that one. So, from the ground up is a film that's on Amazon Prime right now. It's also on Tubi, and I'm in it. Oh, really? Yes, it's a documentary that came out before this one, the one that you're talking about. Oh, you know the one I'm talking about. Right. I was actually surprised. The game changes. The game changes. Yeah. yeah, I was slated to be in that one, but some things happen, you know, behind the scenes that we don't know. But in general, so, the the information in there, you're 100 percent in agreement with in the game changes in terms of. Yeah, I don't. I, yes, because you know, I I know the guys, and I know the people that were in, involved in it, and I I did I watch it all? I think I watched it all because I watched it a few times, but it's been so long ago. But you know, I'm glad it came. It came, it did it did enough. Now the thing that was interesting is Arnold Schwarzenegger is. In it, but I don't know if he's vegan. Yeah. Well, he yeah. was just in there talking about, you know, not promoting vegan, but just talking about how great it is to eat, you know, healthy. Yeah. You know, you know and then, but I guess we do evolve because there was a the time when he, he talked against it. And now, you know, he's talking for it. Yeah. Well, I mean, people like you are proving them wrong because, uh, right. What you're doing is amazing, and I, I wish you the best of health physically and uh, success in everything you're doing. Everybody, I'm going to put Tori's website below, and all his social media is there, and he posts regularly to social media. So on your website, YouTube, whatever, do you do, you do videos of your workout? Is it just you talk? Yes. What, uh, so it's you working yes. out. And, I, and I'm going to evolve more into, because I'm getting a lot more of what do I do on a regular basis, like my daily day-to-day -day life type thing. So I just need to, and I also need to get someone that can help me film that because I realized the most, the most successful people when it comes to those things have someone who's dedicated to filming and uploading because the uploading is the hardest part. Well, it's like anything. Once you do it, you get used to it and you. Correct. And I'm, I'm it doing out. it. It just takes, just takes time. Yeah. Yeah. Well, man, it's a pleasure to meet you finally and uh, to connect with you. And I, I definitely want to encourage everybody to put your comments and questions below the video and we'll come back and have Tori on again and uh, answer some of those questions together. But ask him directly, go to his website and uh, when his book's out, get his book. And uh, if you want a trainer to look your best, uh, he's available. <laughs> Maybe yeah. he's so busy. I don't know, but contact him. And they'll find out. So tell us the name of your website. I'm going to post it below, but tell us the name for people that can't read. Website is just Tory Washington. And it's Tory Washington across all platforms. You YouTube, I have a YouTube channel. I have Twitter, even though much people don't use Twitter now. Instagram, TikTok, it's all Tory Washington. All right, Tory, thanks for being on. You want to leave everybody with any information before we end? Man, I just want to say thank you very much, Paul, for having me on. I always appreciate being able to share anything about my journey in this life. And, you know, one thing I say to people is don't take things personal. You know, we all have a life to live, you know, so just, just live it. All right. Thank you, Tori. Everybody, thanks for watching. Uh, put your comments and questions below. Until then, everybody have a great day and a great raw life. And thank you again, Tori. Thank you. Nature's wealth, good for your health. This is the Raw Life Health Show. Raw Life. Brighten up your life